SARMs, Selective Androgen Receptor Modulators. What this stands for, nobody knows. I'm just kidding, there's people out there who understand what that means. To my understanding, it means they work on specific androgen receptors to cause an effect. So rather than like a spray and pray type of effect, it's more of like a precision type of effect. At least that's the idea. At least that's my understanding. Let me know if I'm totally wrong on that. So in the realm that we all know about, when SARMs are referred to, they are these research compounds that people have been experimenting with at their own risk to potentially enhance muscle growth, strength, fat burning, et cetera, et cetera. Now, based on what I've seen, word of mouth, friends of friends, and online is it does seem like there is some kind of positive effect. You guys have probably seen the videos, they're all over like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. And then on top of that, the World Anti-Doping Agency, WADA, has banned SARMs. So that indicates to me that, you know, they might work a little bit too well or something like that for performance enhancement. But that's not to say they're without side effects. In fact, there are a ton of reported side effects from SARMs, and I am not recommending anyone tries any of these. I'm just covering this topic for educational and inter entertainment purposes. So it's kind of like a sketchy, questionable, who knows what a who, are you gonna take the risk? And then probably the worst part about this, common knowledge passed around by fitness enthusiasts, me and you alike, is that if you do experiment with any of these substances, you are no longer in the natty club. That's right, you're not natty. And that leads me to the catch. The whole topic of this video. Apparently there might be an herbal substance, a natural substance that might work like a SARM, or it might at least work on a specific androgen receptor causing a positive feedback loop, and I'll get to that in just a second. The herb that might work like a SARM that I've actually been taking now for over 60 days, Cystanch. Cystanch tubulosa. I never read that second part. So Cystanch or Cystanche, depending on where you're from, is it's this desert herb that's apparently been around for centuries in traditional Chinese medicine. It was traditionally used for things like male fertility, uh, boosting energy. I think I came across something that it was Genghis Khan's favorite herb. I don't know if that's true or not, but wasn't he like the conqueror, you know what I'm saying? So he needed his energy. Now there is a lot of anecdotal evidence that I came across online in reviews, on Reddit, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of people do claim that if this does work for them, that it does help increase energy, strength, and I've even seen a few claims of actual muscle size. Now there also are quite a few studies out there on Sustanch showing a potential positive effect on things like energy, mood, nerve growth factor, similar to lion's mane, um, so kind of like a nootropic, and then also things like energy, strength, et cetera, et cetera, kind of like an adaptogen. Actually, in fact, this thing is also considered an adaptogen similar to other adaptogenic herbs. At least that's what I came across. But now regarding the whole SARM thing with Sustanch. So within the Sustanch extract, there's a substance known as Echinacea side, which apparently works like a natural SARM. Echinacea side apparently works on androgen receptors in the hypothalamus. Now, apparently based on what I found is it actually is an antagonist or it down regulates those androgen receptors. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, to my understanding, there's a feedback loop. And if those androgen receptors in the hypothalamus sense too much testosterone production, well, then they'll downregulate testosterone production through the whole chain of mechanisms to get to testosterone. I think it's a little bit more complicated than just hypothalamus testosterone. But to keep it simple, too much testosterone, the androgen receptors in the hypothalamus sense that, and they're like, whoa, Calm down, let's make less testosterone. So by down-regulating those receptors in the hypothalamus, your body thinks, oh man, we don't have enough testosterone. So produces more testosterone. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool. Brain doesn't think we're producing enough testosterone, so it's gonna make our body produce a lot more testosterone. That's exactly what I was looking to do. But there might be a potential catch. A question rolling around Reddit is if Sustanch can work to downregulate those androgen receptors in the hypothalamus, could it also potentially downregulate other androgen receptors, kind of canceling out the entire effect potentially? At least that's what I think the question is asking. And I don't know. 
I really don't know. So the way I saw all of this was just blah, 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 blah. Guess I'm gonna have to just try it out for myself. And then I did. So a little over 60 days ago, in an effort to try it out for myself to see if I'll experience any of these benefits or side effects, I started taking one tablet a day of this Sustanch Turbulosa from Nootropics Depot. Now I am currently not affiliated with this company in any way. I just like their products because they test them for heavy metals and other contaminants and they put their tests up there on their website for you to see. And I think if you wanna look at a specific lot or batch, you can actually email them and they'll send you the test results. I haven't done that, I don't know for certain, but I do appreciate the transparency because honestly, even in the supplement, the natty supplement world, who really knows what you're getting? I mean, really, seriously. And honestly, who knows if they're lying about these tests. It's just another layer of transparency that I like to see that makes me cross the line that's like, okay, I have, I have trust in you. Can you ever trust another human 100%? The answer is no, Greg. No, you can't. Anyways, I think what matters for this video is what has my experience been like? Why did I really start taking these? And did I experience any negative side effects? So first of all, if you don't already know, I've been supplementing with Tonkat Ali. And I'm telling you, for me, I feel like that herb has had a substantial benefit when it comes to just energy levels, strength, the feeling of having like a testosterone boost. Um, however, after taking Tonkat Ali, in my case, for about two months, on straight, I notice the effects just like wane off, like I lose them. And then it seems like I have to take at least two weeks. I usually take a month off or I did take a month off to like, I guess, clear out and get the effect back when I take it back again. And the problem with that is like, I have this boost and then it's like, it, it wanes off and then I have to take a whole month off before I can just get a boost again. So I'm only really getting a boost for like a month, a month and a half before it just kind of goes away. So recently what I decided to do and what has been working for me now for the last like several months is doing a four day on three day off with Tonkat to where I can just continue taking it and continue having a more consistent boost without losing it. At least I haven't lost that boost yet. However, something I have noticed a little over 60 days ago is that during those four days, it seems like my energy and everything positive related to Tonkat that I've experienced does actually go up. And when I stop taking it for those three days, there's a little dip. Like I am seriously feeling a little dip. By the end of the third day, I'm like, man, I can't wait for tomorrow so I can start taking Tonkat again. Now it's definitely not as noticeable as something like caffeine. It's not that acute, but strength, energy, even mood, I do notice a dip. So therefore, in my search to try to find something to fill in the gap, fill in those three days, cycle the herbs, I came up with Sustanch. Now at first, for just like the first two weeks really, I only took this on the days when I wasn't taking Tonkat Ali. And honestly, if I noticed anything at all, it was very subtle. So I was like, you know what, maybe a little bit more then. And I just started taking it every single day, including the days I started taking Tonkat. There did seem to be a subtle effect from taking this. I noticed that dip that I was experiencing when not taking Tonkat Ali for those three days, seemed to be lifted a little bit higher. I noticed this increase in more consistent energy that felt like I almost wasn't taking any days off of Tonkat. Very subtle, and I'm being sensitive Luke here, and I know a lot of people might think I'm just having like a placebo effect, but I did take a week off in the middle of this 60 day experiment where I didn't take any Sustanch, and only did my four days on of Tonkat. And during that week off, I noticed a subtle difference in energy levels and even strength. Now, if you guys have been following me over the last couple of weeks, I've been increasing my calories, I've been winter bulking, and my strength, therefore, has been going up. And I thought most of the strength, or basically all the strength going up, was due to the calorie increase. However, when I took the week off of Sustanch, I noticed almost like a subtle drop in strength. I just didn't feel as like on in the gym and those last couple of reps with heavier weights felt like I just, I was done. But then taking it again within about a week, I started to notice once again, it felt like I had this just more of like an oomph. Like that oomph I was trying to explain with like Tonkat, it's like a more lower frequency, like subtle oomph. Like Tonkat is like, it's like, yeah, it's like high, a little bit higher. 
this feels like it's more like whoa like that and and neither of those two is like that caffeine like man sorry for the abstract explanation i feel like you guys kind of get what i'm talking about though that's what i like about you guys of course all of this could be placebo and of course everybody's different and everybody reacts differently to different things so that's no guarantee this is going to affect you a certain way or not. So I do feel like personally for me, I've noticed an increase in strength while on Sustanch. And that's why I've continued taking it since then. That's why I bought a new one of these because I'm like, hey, if this is affecting strength, that's pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? Now, side effects. The reported side effects that I found online are really just like nausea, stomach discomfort, and I've even found like constipation or like a laxative effect in some cases. Once again, everybody's different, I guess. For me, zero side effects. I noticed no negative effects from taking this, which is also another reason why I'm like, heck, I'm just going to continue taking this. So that's why I added this herb in. Those are the positive benefits I believe I'm experiencing by taking this herb. Once again, everybody's different. This is not medical advice. Feel free to let me know your thoughts below. Have you tried this herb and experienced any positive, negative things with it? Let me know that too. I would love to hear. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'm probably going to be trying out a few more herbs because why the heck not? So let me know what you guys want me to try. If you guys want me to try anything, I want to keep it natty though. I want to keep it natty. So herbs. With that being said, I hope you all have a great day. Stay tuned. More videos coming out. Peace. Dang it. Right at the end. Peace. I will see you all in the next video.